Are you someone that's been using Linux for just a few weeks, maybe a few months, maybe a year or two? If you are, you've probably never really considered that the Linux distribution that you're currently using, maybe you currently love the Linux distribution you're currently using, have you considered the fact that that Linux distribution probably won't exist in 5, 10, 20 years? The Linux distribution your own will probably one day die. And I think a lot of, especially newer to Linux users, have never considered this. As somebody that's used Linux primarily for the last 15 years or so on my PCs, I've seen dozens of these Linux distributions crop up, become very popular in some cases, and then overnight disappear and sometimes leaving the communities that they built kind of in a lurch where you've got all of these people that were using this distribution and overnight they have to figure out where to go next. And today's video is going to be a little bit of a nostalgic video because the topic for this video is I'm going to do my top five Linux distributions that are now dead. These are discontinued distributions that were once very popular. These five Linux distributions I'm going to talk about too. The reason I chose them is not just because they were popular, it's because they were unique. They did something very different than other Linux distributions at the time. That was part of the reason why they rose in popularity. And then overnight, they were gone. And, you know, so this is my top five dead Linux distributions. And the first in my top five dead Linux distribution list is going to be CrunchBang Linux. And I'm not ranking these in any particular order, but I wanted to start with CrunchBang because CrunchBang was one of my favorite Linux distributions that ever existed. CrunchBang was Debian stable with the open box window manager and had a really cool customized open box with a tent tube panel and some conkeys and in the right click menu for open box you had all of these custom dynamic menu scripts that you can you can script with open box where the right click menu can dynamically display information like your most recent files that you've used or you know web information i i remember they used to have like latest forum posts from the crunchbang forums that would populate the right click open box menu and it was just really cool it was really unique and it was one of the most customized linux desktops at the time and this distribution has now been dead for about 10 years or so. The, yeah, the last release was May of 2013. And again, it was, it was such a popular distribution. The website still exists. And, you know, this was one of those distributions that really caused a very large community a lot of heartache because it's like overnight, the person that was maintaining it, the person in charge, decided he was done, boom, it's dead, right? And so you've got all of these thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, I don't know what their numbers were, that were using CrunchBang Linux. And then they had to go somewhere. Well, the great thing with free and open source software is free and open source software doesn't necessarily die. You know, it, it, it can never die as long as there's at least one person willing to still take that piece of free and open source software and make it continue. And CrunchBang, because it had a very large community around it, there were a bunch of forks that sprang up overnight. There were like three or four forks of CrunchBang that sprang up almost immediately. Two of them still exist. You have CrunchBang++ and you have Bunsen Labs. And they are essentially continuations of the old CrunchBang project. So Debian Stable with OpenBox with all the custom CrunchBang scripts and everything. I've done videos on both CrunchBang++ and Bunsen Labs in the past. So check those out. So CrunchBang was a very influential Linux distribution because obviously I've already mentioned all the forks of CrunchBang, all the Debian forks of CrunchBang, but also a lot of Arch-based distributions that sprung up in recent years because Arch has really become popular, I'd say, especially in the last five or six years. But I remember one of the very first Arch-based distributions that kind of made Arch uh, installable through an easy install, right, was ArchBang. ArchBang was essentially CrunchBang in Arch form. And then you've got uh, projects like Maybox, which is Manjaro with OpenBox. And it's got a lot of the same kind of customized scripts. And it's got the same kind of look and feel as CrunchBang. But again, it's based on Manjaro. So you've got several of these OpenBox distributions that are with us. There's probably like 10 or 12 of these things, these OpenBox Linux distributions that really kind of mimic CrunchBang. In some way, they are a continuation of what CrunchBang started many years ago. The next Linux distribution I want to talk about is Damn Small Linux. Now, Damn Small Linux, unfortunately, is now 
been long damn dead Linux. So the last release of it was again uh, very similar to Crunchbang. It was August 2012 was the last release of damn small Linux. What was DSL Linux as it was commonly referred to as the uh, acronym, right? So DSL Linux was a 50 megabyte sized um, ISO. So when they say damn small, it was about as small as you could possibly get a Linux operating system to be. It was very stripped down. It was designed to run in RAM. So you didn't even have to install it. P people typically ran DSL Linux off of a CD at the time. You know, this was uh, back when CDs were very popular to run operating systems on. And unfortunately, damn small Linux, for whatever reason, just disappeared one day kind of like crunchbang linux they still have a website that's up it's never been updated since the death of it but you can go back just for nostalgia's sake and read a little bit of the website now damn small linux we do have other similar projects not quite like damn small linux but we still have things like puppy linux which is a very small linux distribution that uh, you know can be installed on 32-bit machines that's another thing dsl uh, linux was a uh, 32 bit so that was nice this is something we don't have a lot of especially now for those of you that still have 32 bit computers you know that's getting increasingly more difficult to find a 32 bit distro um, puppy linux though is still around tiny core linux is still around so basically they're just doing the same kinds of ideas trying to have a really minimal distribution that can be run on a live usb or uh, even optical disks for those of you that still have an optical drive now, like Crunchbang, a damn small Linux was also a Debian-based Linux distribution. Actually, it was based on Debian and the old Nopix distribution, which is another dead distribution that, honestly, I probably should have made a mention of yet. Honorable mention in the list. Matter of fact, when we talked about Archbang a minute ago, I thought Archbang is another one that I don't know if they've had a release in years. I haven't heard about it in a long time. If it's dead, it's another one that probably does need a mention. Now, the third Linux distribution that has long been dead that I think deserves a mention on my top five dead Linux distribution list, of course, is Hannah Montana Linux. Now, for those of you that were alive uh, like 10, 12 years ago, uh, this came out, I believe, in 2009. So it's about 13 years ago now. Hannah Montana, that particular TV show that starred Miley Cyrus, was extremely popular. So obviously you had fans of the show that wanted to create Hannah Montana themed Linux. And what they chose was to base this off of Kubuntu 904. That's right, Kubuntu. Kubuntu 904. 904 was not an LTS release of Ubuntu, so it only had support for nine months. So the uh, repositories for this thing have long been dead. I mean, it was pretty much, you know, within a year of its release, so this distribution was already dead. The repositories no longer worked. Another interesting thing with Hannah Montana Linux being based off Kubuntu 904 back in 2009, that was the very, very early days of KDE 4. KDE 4 was a complete train wreck. It was an absolute nightmare. It was slow. It was bloated. It was extremely buggy. Um, the sh The the version of KDE that Hannah Montana Linux shipped with was KDE 4.02, I believe, which is like the second release of KDE 4, and it was just so bad. And for those of you that want to take a look at Hannah Montana, uh, you can still go download the ISOs. Of course, again, the repos don't work, but if you just want to spin it up in a live environment and get your Hannah Montana wallpaper, and especially if you want to take a look at just how bad KDE Four was, you know, compared to modern day KDE 5 Plasma. You know, go check out Hannah Montana Linux. Number four on my list of now dead Linux distributions has to be the Ubuntu Satanic Edition. So Ubuntu comes in a lot of flavors. I don't know how many official flavors they have these days, probably like seven, eight, maybe nine official flavors. In years past, they had other editions as well. I remember you had Mythbuntu, you had Edubuntu, which I don't think either one of those exists. You had the Ubuntu Satanic Edition. I think you also had an Ubuntu Christian Edition. I'm pretty sure somebody, uh, it was probably not an official flavor, I mean, neither was the Satanic Edition, but there was an Ubuntu Muslim Edition, I believe. I could be wrong on some of that, but you had a lot of these community respins of Ubuntu, <laughs> one of the more unique ones, because they 
again, these are not just dead distributions, but they're very unique, each one of these. And it doesn't get more unique than having Ubuntu Satanic Edition, which was uh, basically trying to be a combination of, of course, free software on an Ubuntu base, but with a metal music kind of theme to it, because so much uh, metal music, modern metal music, has a kind of a satanic theme, satanic overtones, and that was kind of the idea behind this. It had a lot of kind of dark imagery as far as wallpapers and theming, you know. It was kind of, it looked like, you know, like a rebellious teenager made a Linux distribution, right? It was just, again, it was kind of weird. It was kind of kooky and kind of like, you know, things like Hannah Montana is kind of weird and kooky. It didn't last long, you know, it's one of those things that sprang up and was popular for a very brief amount of time. It got a lot of press and then, you know, eventually whoever created it probably grew up a little bit. And, you know, they just no longer had time to develop this. So, unfortunately, this has been dead for, oh, seven or eight years. You can see this was posted here in, in 2015, the last release of Ubuntu Satanic Edition, November 15th of 2012. Actually, so it's been dead 10 years. Wow. Uh, I, 2012, 2013, it seems like is when all of these Linux distributions died, except for Hannah Montana, which was pretty much dead on release in 2009. So these were all within the first, I would say, three or four years that I used Linux. That's probably why I find these uh, so... Uh, nostalgic it's because you know when you're kind of new to something because I would have still been fairly new to Linux in the first three or four years of me using it that's probably why I gravitate to some of these so much the next one I want to talk about number five on my top five Linux distributions that are now dead is Synarch which many people most of you guys have probably never heard of Synarch because it's been dead for many many years actually it was forked twice. Uh, it, it, CinArch, many people don't know this, it was of course Arch with the Cinnamon desktop. When it was created, it was kind of early days for Cinnamon. Cin Cinnamon was created by the Linux Mint team because GNOME 3 was so bad. Nobody wanted to move from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3, which was a, a complete train wreck. So the Linux Mint team, they created Cinnamon. Cinnamon kind of only worked on Linux Mint in the early days. Uh, it wasn't there was no like arch spins with the cinnamon desktop environment. So people wanted that, that Linux meant cinnamon desktop experience on arch. So somebody created CinArch and it actually gained a pretty good sizable popularity. Like it was kind of high on the distro watch list back in the day. People talked about it. It was a popular Linux distribution. Eventually they renamed it because they started offering more desktop environments and window managers other than just Cinnamon. So Cinarch actually eventually was rebranded and renamed to Antergos. You, you guys remember uh, Antergos or Antergos? I'm, who knows how to actually pronounce this thing right? But then, you know, it, it lived on as Antergos. And Antergos was a very popular Linux distribution with a unique installer. It was a live installer, you know, it pulled things down directly from the internet. So you always had the latest up-to-date packages and you can pick and choose what desktop environments or window managers, tiling window managers you, you wanted to use. So Antergos was really neat. And then one day the people that were maintaining Antergos um, just decided it was over and it was kind of a shock to the community, very similar to what Crunchbang did back in the day overnight. Antergos was gone, <laughs> but kind of like, you know, the community this had such a large community behind it, kind of like Crunchbang had all the forks that sprung up. Antergos also had a, a few forks that sprung up, the most popular being Endeavor OS. So really, Synarch slash Antergos, even though they are dead, it does live on now as Endeavor OS because, again, free and open source software never really dies. So that's just a little bit of me walking you through a little bit of the past. <laughs> Some of the, the fond memories I have of long gone Linux distributions that I wish were still around. Again, these particular distributions were, again, very unique. They served a real world purpose. I think that's why I also like them is because so many distributions kind of all do the same thing where the five distributions that I highlighted today were really kind of doing something that nobody else was doing at the time. And, and I like that. I, I like when people travel a different path than what everybody else is going. 
Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Brian, Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Royal, Wes, Why You Bald Homie, Alex, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Dai, Yokai, George, Lee, Marstrom, Methos, Nate, Arian, Alexander, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick little trip down memory lane would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. And we can't forget Justin Bieber Linux, a.k.a. Bibian.